Hello everyone, let's revisit the clock gating analysis now. So the reason we had started with the clock gating analysis at this point and this point was the reason of the of the enable pin or of the enable signal that was arriving at the A pin. It was the glitches and all those things. So let's try to revisit that thing again. Let's say you had this clock signal and this was your enable signal and we didn't we didn't want this particular this particular enable signal to create a false clock edge at the clock pin. Okay, because if you compare this enable signal with this particular clock signal, this is the output that you get and your cg1 colon cg1 slash o is something like this this is the this is not a correct clock waveform to be to be used to the flip flop clock to pin flip flop to clock pin so what do we do to get rid of this we added a clock gating check but what if we try to solve this problem by construction itself so what if we add some certain logic over here so that this so that we need not do the clock gating check separately but the checks will be inherent so the best way to do is is to add a latch at this point of time Okay, so if you add a latch at this at this point, the enable pin is connected to the input of the latch and the output of the latch is then connected to the A pin of your clock gating. So what happens in this case? So let's see how do we get rid of the glitch that we saw some time back. So for example, we'll take the same waveforms. We have this clock signal, we have the main clock signal going over here and we have the inverted clock signal going to the latch. So which means that the latch will be transparent for all these inverted clocks. For all this low level clock signal, your latch will be transparent. But when we say a, a transparent, we will very soon look into the latch timing so the way the latch works is that it is very different than what the flip-flop works the flip-flop works for an edge whereas the latch works for a level so in this case the latch this particular latch will work for a low level because if you see there's an inverted clock present over here so i'll get back to the latch timing in a bit from now first of all let us try to understand what does this latch do for us okay so for example when you have this particular when you have this particular edge or when you have this particular level of the clock signal and at whatever whatever is present at the enable pin so what, so let's say over here there is a high present at the enable signal so this high gets propagated through the latch till the ql pin okay so let's look into that so for example at this low level of your latch the latch gets open or the latch is transparent you see a very you see a high signal or a logic one level at the enable pin and that same enable pin or the same logic one level is getting propagated through the latch and stays till this point now at this point whenever your clock level is high your latch goes your latch goes off because it's a it's an inverted clock over here so whenever your latch goes off the same output is being written because there is no new data that is being written into the latch Okay, so when the latch sees the next negative or the next low level clock signal, the latch again becomes transparent and whatever data is present at, the, at this point of time for the enable pin, that gets propagated. So in this case, the enable pin is has got a, a logic zero level over here and that is what gets propagated over here. Okay, and finally, when you see the when the when the in, when the input or the clock input of the latch goes high, the latch goes off, and as a result of that, whenever the latch goes off, whatever you see at the whatever the signal that was present before the latch going off is being retained completely. Okay, and that's how you get rid of this particular small glitch violation. And what have what had happened if this particular glitch had come over here? So it would have been very simple because your latch is transparent for the complete cycle for the complete finite picosecond. So if you see the latch, latch would have seen the high signal, it would have gone high, but immediately the latch would have seen the low signal again. So it would have gone low, and the output output would have been returned to the low signal. And as a result of that, you get rid of this particular glitch without doing anything. And now you need not add any setup, any set clock getting check at the input of the pin because the latch timing itself will take care of your setup and whole violations. So let's look into, we'll look into the latch timing violations when we go there. Basically, we'll take the, take up the same circuitry and look into how does the flop to latch timing looks into. So that, that, that point of time, these things will be clear, but we need not need a separate clock getting check over here. Okay, that's the point and also we got rid of this particular glitch and we and, and, and things go and things go very fine over here. So let's look into there is there is another problem associated with this one. I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute from now. First of all, let, let us try to analyze this waveform. So you have this waveform at the QL. You have this waveform at the QL. You have the AND gate. Uh, you have the AND gate over here and, you, and, and, and one of the legs of the AND gate is the clock signal. So let's see how does this behave. So you let's put this QL signal at the top and we'll try to analyze the output of output of the AND gate. So output of the AND gate will look something like this. Okay, so you have this high and low, so it becomes low. You have this low, this high, so this becomes low. You have this high, this high, so this becomes high. So you get a clock signal at the correct at the right time for the for the one nanosecond at the, at the one nanosecond time period when you want the data to be when you want the new data to be loaded from D in to D out. So you get a clock signal for that, and the new data D in gets loaded to the D out. 
okay the clock signal is being retained completely for the for the time period for which your enable pin is high and when your clock goes low the complete thing goes low and you get a proper clock signal over here now if you compare this clock signal with with what we had got earlier or with what we had got in the past with the set clock uh, set with the set clock getting check at the a pins and b pins it it looks something like this so it matches exactly what we had what we had seen just by a presence of latch over here things get very simple and, uh, and you need not add any set clock getting check over here at the a pin and the b pin without doing anything else you get the complete clock signal as you had seen in the past and that was the intent and you also get rid of the glitches okay so next what we have to look into we have to try to revisit this again so if you look into if you look into uh, uh, this particular technique this particular technique is referred to as latch based clock gating but there is something else that you can do okay so let's try to revisit this again we'll try to revisit this again and see what can be done so what if so this thing this particular section of your circuit needs very careful routing because let's say if this route goes high or let there, let's say for some reasons there is a lot of clock buffers that gets added at this point of time or there are a lot of buffers that gets added at this point of time so this creates this particular routing itself has to be done very carefully and if it is not done it might lead to un unreasonable timing violations which might which might lead some extra work so in order to avoid those kind of extra thing or extra work what we do is we take this particular thing we take this particular thing as a block okay we take this thing completely out of the circuitry and try to implement this separately and how do we do we, this is called as custom routing or custom layout we have talked about custom layout in some of in one of my previous courses so this is an example of a custom ip you take this you customize it and then you then you just use this particular block in your circuitry so your custom block your custom block will look something like this it will have access to the enable pin access to the clock pin and access to the output pin but the internals of the circuitry will not be known to you but the way you will you will get you will get to know about this particular circuitry is through something else but this kind of technique is referred to as integrated clock gating cell okay it's called as icgs and the icg is the only thing that you need for your icgs to work at the top level is the dot lips okay so this will be a black box for you and when, and, and the black box might be a, a something like this so this is one of the snippet from my custom layout course the circuit is, is a bit different but the concept remains the same you have this layout you this, these are all nothing but hand drawn custom layout so you customize the routes or customize the routes between your output pin of the output pin of the latch and the input of the and gates so you hand draw them so that you don't see any unreasonable violations when you plug them as, at, at the top level and do a, a do an automated routing so that's why we avoid the automated routing and we hand route it and this is how it looks like this will how it will be looking like in in the future and then we take we, we take this particular block separately and plug it in in our own in our final circuit in our original circuit and the only thing that is needed for this particular block is nothing but the dot lip so how does the dot lip look like the icg dot lip looks like so it looks something like this so what we'll do is we'll stop at this point of time and the next video i'll try to explain each and every section of the dot lip of an icg dot lip how it looks like okay so let's start with the icg dot lip in the next video thank you